Hello everyone, back to shooting into today's uh, fourth and final video. We're going to have a look at the weather. We have 14 days for today's final video. Day 10 will take us to the 21st of November. We'll be able to send out beyond that with the Essential Affairs and ECM Ensembles. Maybe on track of weeks. We'll have a look at 7th B2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. Gets as well into December. And we'll do a little bit of CT Saturday for you as well. So I should get on that for you in a moment. Just to say that first video to say was our 6th end UK weather forecast. We've also released a weekend forecast. And that was another 42 day uh, for UK and Ireland EC 42 day. So check out those free videos if you'd like to do that. Like, share, and subscribe on all of today's videos and content. And thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. I just better explain what happened with the pub run. So I know some of you were waiting for uh, the pub run live uh, last night, that, uh, about an hour to go. I had to cancel it uh, because I got way late creating the analogs of this week's 11th winter 2023-24 update. So I'm so very sorry for anybody who was waiting for the uh, live stream. It should be back next Friday, um, you know, analogs um, on that permitting. But hopefully I'll get the analogs done uh, a little bit quicker uh, next week than was the case this week. But it's always a crazy time of year uh, at Gatsby. It's this time of year with so many updates and, you know, particularly the winter updates, which are very, very important involved and intricate and take a lot of planning and getting together so so you know we just watch this space um and uh, hopefully we'll be able to do another pub run live next friday but again i'm so sorry for anybody that was waiting for that last night the payoff will be with tomorrow's 11th winter update because you'll see how much data we've got for um uh we're doing a, like a bit of an el nino special and the analogs are going to be el nino um Reanalysis, if you like, including the Doki. Um, and uh, you're going to find out tomorrow uh, how many analogs we got. And uh, that will be the payoff, having to cancel the pub run. But once again, I'm so sorry, everybody, but that uh, happened. Right, OK, let's start the video. We're going to begin with searching the temperature. The CT is now sitting at 8.6, which is 2.2 degrees above the 61 to 99 average. That's provisional to yesterday, December 10th of uh, November there. So I continue to kick, uh, to tick down and we'll carry on doing so. So I'd imagine by the beginning of next week, that's going to be probably somewhere in the low eights maybe. And uh, sort of be determined where that's going to finish by month's end, of course. Uh, right, so let's do a little bit of CT Saturday. This would be Central, in Central England Temperature Index going all the way back to 16 59, the most reliable uh, temperature, long-term temperature record anywhere on Earth. Of course, further back go, the, the more unreliable it gets. So, when well, you get back to 1600, it's just a snapshot, but still useful, um, nevertheless. So, if we come down, anyway, to the current year, to 2023, there it is. And we can see that we've had another warm year, of course, for most months coming out with above average temperatures. April was a little bit cooler but uh, many of the months above average um july and august weren't anything to get that excited about 16.1 16.4 and then of course having a very warm autumn september a record breaking 17.0 and a really mild october at 12.1 as well november's uh number will be placed just there and we wait to see where that's going to end up now last year we had a very uh very mild uh november at 9.2 but before that in 2021 was a little bit cooler at 7.2 quite a chilly november in 2019 as well at 6.2 and in 2016 we actually got uh november ct of 5.5 which is really quite cold that's the last time we had what you could say was uh, a genuinely cold november i don't know much of remember much about that i can't remember much snow but obviously it must have been uh, really really quite a cold uh, month um 2015 before that though was exceptionally mild at 9.4 not the mildest on record but was setting up the uh, really really warm december that we have very often december and november november and december do have um similarities with one another you know they can sometimes be a pair uh, like that uh, before that, so we had a uh, warm November in 2011 as well at 9.5. That was really one of the warmest Novembers on record. But the year before that, in 2010, was setting up the December to remember. So uh, November 2010 comes in at 5.1. 
Um, no, not overly cold, but uh, not exceptionally cold, I should say, but certainly cold, you know, by modern standards. And it was really in the last week, 10 days, a month, I'm sure everybody remembers it, but the cold uh, dug in, and, and that, of course, uh, culminated in that extraordinary cold December, which we will talk about in next month's CT Saturday, uh, of course. But warmish November on record was back in 1994. They've uh, corrected this slightly now is 9.9. That always used to be 10.1. So I'm not sure why there's shade 0.2 of a degree off that. I'm you know, not sure why those little adjustments in the CT index are taking place. But anyway, that, that was the uh, warmest November on record back in 1994. And it still is, even though they shaved like um, 0.2 of a degree off it. And it's now is under 10 degrees. Nevertheless, um, that's still the mildest November on the CT record. If we go back to the 1930s, before 1994, the warmest was actually 1938, I think, with 9.4. We had two very mild uh, Novembers back to back, 1938 and 1939. 9.4 in 1938, 8.7 in 1939. Of course, before uh, uh, that, uh, um, that 9.7, whatever it was, 8.7, that's setting up the, the freezing cold winter of 1939, 1940, of course. Uh, now, the coldest November of the uh, 20th century was back in 1915, there it is, at 2.8. However, it's not the coldest within the overall CT index. So that have to go back a very, very long time, and we go all the way back to the year of 1782 up here, which has a CT of 2.3 for November and again that was uh, uh, that was our coldest uh, November within the entire CT index. We won't be getting anything close to that for <laughs> this November of course and uh, as I say we will find out in a couple of weeks where we're coming in. I've got a feeling we might be in the sevens. Rich thinks we might be in the sevens. I've got a feeling we might be in the sevens for this November but we shall see what happens. OK, that's CT Saturday, everybody. Right, B's with GFS, upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. For the next couple of weeks, so red line, it's upper air temperature average for Swansea. Starting up about average at the moment. Upper air temperatures will be lifting up through the second half of the weekend and into the beginning of uh, next week. However, it's associated with more low pressure. And later next week, upper air temperatures drop away again and it becomes significantly cooler and or colder. Back into milder conditions by next weekend. I mean, Beyond that, have been quite close to the long-term 30-year average. Precipitation-wise, lots more rain to come. So plenty of wet weather on the way um, through the second half of this weekend and on into next week as well. And beyond that, just looking uh, really quite showery as well as we go through the final week or so of November. So more uh, rain to come, certainly for western parts of the country. Temperature anomaly, it's going to be 11th, 19th of November, a little bit above average. Notice the cold really digging in over Scandinavia, though. Look how cold the temperature anomaly is for much of, well, not just Scandinavia, but Nordic regions. Norway, uh, many parts of Sweden, into Finland as well. So, um, I mean, on a temperature scale, that's like 6 to 8 degrees below average. And even into the far south of Sweden, we see that the temperature anomaly is a little bit below average. Denmark still is above average, though. But it doesn't observe a cold really digging in in the far north of Europe. But however, our temperature only for UK and Ireland is uh, a little bit above average if we can. Precipitation anomalies from 11th, 19th of November, about average as well. Latest wind flow map from Earth, no school dot net shows that the next area of low pressure in the Atlantic with its weather fronts are uh, heading towards us. So although we are managing to pull off a mostly dry day today, the rain will be back tonight and tomorrow. OK, let's go through chart data then. This is how the latest UK bet Euro run is looking big tonight on Tuesday. Again, we've got low pressure exiting over to Denmark and more low pressure waiting in the winds in the Atlantic. Check out weekend forecast, see what's happening on Monday in terms of wet and windy weather. Now we go over to Wednesday and we're into a showery westerly flow then and that takes us through 
um, towards that stage of next week when high pressure starts ridging up from the southwest. That begins to turn us a little bit drier at the end of next week. However, deep low pressure in the Atlantic bring further wet and windy weather um, by next weekend into north and west anyway. And with a push of southwest winds turning a lot milder next weekend as well. Potentially icon or once more looks uh, rather showery on Tuesday and into Wednesday as well. That carries on to Thursday and Friday through the Saturday. Higher pressure trying to ridge up from the south southwest, bring something a little bit drier, maybe slightly colder for the beginning of the weekend, but then with this area of low in the Atlantic introducing southwesterly winds and a return of wet weather to the north and west later on next weekend. But south and east probably mostly dry, though, close to that ridge. We've got a GFS midnight run again, all looking much of a much this for the middle part of the coming week, showering conditions continuing. And then at the end of the week, again, higher pressure ridging up from the southwest, turning things dry, maybe a little bit colder to begin the weekend before the southwesterly winds start pumping cloud and uh, milder temperatures later on uh, next weekend. Heading up toward day 10, well, the reach doesn't last very long. <laughs> Low pressure back in and further showering conditions for day 10. And then a bit of a change uh, after that. So higher pressure begins to get going up towards Greenland and starts to push southwards along with some colder uh, air from the north, actually, which is 22nd of November. We're a long way out now, but that is turning drier, but also colder there. And uh, that high pressure then is in for the remainder of the GFS Midnight Road. So high pressure sitting to our north and west will bring a lot of dry weather, but would be cold with overnight frost. And um, I'll tell you how around the high pressure will bring the wind from the north or a north direction. Most parts of Europe are looking cold as well. Very cold air into Scandinavia. We've got the minus five serves iceberg through the country. So the GFS Midnight Road definitely turning a lot colder there through the final uh, week or so. Of, uh, of November. Let's just quickly go back to the ensemble and see how that uh, stacked up. So, um, no, it did become a bit of a cold outlier. Well, I wouldn't necessarily say, that, say it's an outlier. Quite a few are doing something similar, but it did become one of the coldest GFS ensemble members there um, later on. Uh, but I say quite a few are going in a colder direction, perhaps through the final week, to five, five, final five, seven days of, of the uh, month, anyway. Uh, just something to keep an eye on, but a colder uh, GFS midnight run today. How's the six said? Look, let's have a look at that one. So, this is the latest GFS run as the time of recorded video at uh, 26 minutes past two on the afternoon, Saturday, the 11th of uh, November. And yes, we've got Wes's in for Tuesday. So, uh, showery conditions then, showery conditions carrying on. We've been about a week maintaining drier under the ridge of high pressure at the end of week into next weekend. Before low pressure quickly starts pushing that aside, coming back in from roughly anti. But we mild though uh, later next weekend and into the beginning of the following week with winds coming up from more of a southerly or southwesterly direction. The extended looking unsettled as well. No cold snap or spell. With GFS 6 then just back to low pressure <laughs> domination. So uh, unsettled weather continuing with the 6 then. If you enjoyed the video, please do like, share and subscribe. Thank you so much everyone for doing that. Why not drop a comment and let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. And don't forget to tell your friends about Gauss weather. Weather events. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. We need to put around 30 subscribers to get ourselves to uh, 17.2k. So, if you could give us a sub and tell your friends and family to subscribe, that would be amazing. We thank you so very much Lee, for that. Right, again, okay, GM once more with low pressure in the ascendancy through uh, the middle part of the coming week and no ridge actually until the end of week with the GM. However, by next weekend, it does start to build up uh, a ridge from the south-southwest, so turning a little bit drier into next weekend, and milder as well. Winds coming up from more of a southerly or southwesterly direction. That's how we finish up at day 10. We're definitely a trend towards higher pressure, both to the east and also to the north and northwest. Uh, low pressure starting to become cut off to the south, maybe. This low probably dropping southwards and going to become a cut off low down here to the coast of Portugal, which probably allows high pressure to uh, take over them. And the ECM looks like that. So once more, shadow conditions are uh, continuing through the middle part of the coming week. Low pressure remains in the uh, driving seat. Um, to the end of the week, then higher pressure ridging up from the southwest, turning a little bit drier 
with the weekend, but the West Wind are coming back in with both southwest winds and this area of below the Atlantic later on in the weekend. And then up to day 10, again, low pressure keeps the unsettled conditions coming with further bouts of rain and showers and whatnot. Not much of a break with the ECM, I have to say. Not much sign of a uh, ridge there. Maybe the most flimsiest of ridges Friday to Saturday next week. But uh, really, that is low pressure all the way. So, this is my precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from Tibetjo.com. Have a dry day. Make the most of it. Goodbye. Time to get through to tomorrow. Rain is advancing back in from off the Atlantic. And then we go to a very wet uh, Monday, particularly Monday morning. Lots of heavy rain and strong winds led into showery conditions through the middle of the week. More rain in the south as we get through to around Wednesday, Thursday. There's a lot of uncertainty with this area of load, by the way. But, um, a lot of models have that train down to France, but the ECM has it further north. So that's one to watch as well, Wednesday to Thursday. And then we're back into those showery conditions, maybe a bit drier right at the very end of the week, but the rain's soon coming back next weekend. And um, that's day 10. And <laughs> it's either showers or long spells of rain there. These are the options on the table within the ECM ensembles today. For day 10, from the Oceanic Met Office, gets to 21st of November. 27 members of the ECM ensembles with lots of low pressure across the north, west Europe, high pressures in the Atlantic as well. So uh, unsettled and a bit cold with that, potentially. Winds coming in from more of a northerly direction, especially so in the north. We've got 14 building higher pressure away to the northwest, but with low pressure from the southwest and high pressure over France. The upshot is we keep wind in from a relatively mild southwesterly direction, all bits unsettled, and that includes big control and operational run. And we've got 10 just here with low pressure, more or less over top of coach. I can be very unsettled as well. Two week time, these are the options that we've got. It gets us to the 26th of November. 14 members of the East Channel Songs with high pressure to our north. Uh, high pressure from south, should say low pressure from north. That brings the wind in from the west. We've got 12 with deep, deep low pressure over top of country. The onslaught continues with that one. We've got 10 with high pressure blocking close to Greenland, but with low pressure underneath it, we're still somehow managing to stay relatively mild with that, keeping the wind in from the southwest. We've got uh, 9 just here with high pressure across southern Scandinavia. That would be mostly dry, probably a bit chilly with that. With some overnight frost. And then this is probably the coldest option. Six here with high pressure blocking around green ice and low pressure is over Scandinavia. And that will bring the wind in from a north or a north east direction. I think very inconclusive, actually. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. I think very inconclusive with those options. For both at day 10 and day 14. Um, so, I mean, it might be high pressure, might be low pressure. It might be mild, might be cold. I think probably the trend is still towards low pressure here, to be honest. But there is a there is a chance that we might get a much drier sort of final week, to ten days of the month. But whether it's mild or cold, um, there's a lot of uncertainty about. CFSB two finally means a five hundred millibar high to nice break down to week periods. The first week period takes us from the eleventh seventeenth November. So this next week will be unsettled, low press continuing to mooch its way in from off the Atlantic. Week two will be the 18th, 24th of November. High pressure again to southwest, low pressure away to the northwest. That seems pretty dry, especially from the south. Still unsettled in the north. It is mild. Winds coming in from the southwest. Week three is going to be the 25th of November 1st of December. High pressure to the south, low pressure to the north. Winds coming in from the Atlantic. On and on it goes. And then week four is the uh, second to the 8th of December and low pressure still heads in from off the Atlantic along with the westerly. So CFS is rock solid but the Atlantic just continues to hold sway right the way through to the end of the first week of December. We'll see. Okay, we're done. If you've enjoyed the video, please like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much for doing that. Why don't you drop a comment? Let's know what you think about this and all of our videos. And don't forget to tell your friends about Gav's World Get them to subscribe as well. You can all watch Gav's together. 
and uh, who would want to do that, eh? Uh, thank you so much, everyone. Right, that's it for today's events. I've got a very busy afternoon slash evening ahead of me because I've got to get the 11th winter update together. And uh, so, <laughs> that's going to be released at 10 a.m. We might be pushing the hour mark with this one or pushing over the hour mark. I've got so much to show, but it's going to be really, really interesting. So many of you have got so many questions about El Nino and what El Nino's winters are like, Madoki El Nino's as well. Um, so, uh, all will be revealed tomorrow at 10 a.m. Of course, we will be live tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. as well. So, uh, we're going to have some uh, long range and we'll discuss the 11th winter update and we'll do a 10 to 14 day in that. And don't forget, the next sort of Christmas countdown will be coming straight after the live stream uh, tomorrow evening too. So loads and loads and loads going on. You enjoy the rest of your Saturday. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow. But for this video, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.